my name is Lori Mandeville, and I'm a PhD student at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. And the area of interest that I enjoy studying is remote sensing of volcanoes, in particular volcanic gases such as sulfur dioxide, and to see how those gaseous emissions relate back to patterns in volcanic activity. I'm here today to present a poster in the 2018 AGU uh, Virtual Poster Showcase. And my poster is entitled, Revisiting the Relationship between the VSI and the VEI using data from the OMI Ozone Measuring Instruments satellite. Um, I have done this research in conjunction with Drs. Ari Kratoru and Ron Resmini, and basically, here is my poster. With the advent of other satellite missions such as GOM, Skiamaki, and OMI, we now have a larger wealth of data to look at in terms of seeing if there's any patterns to volcanic degassing events and again trying to tie those back quantitatively to the VEI metric. So my poster in a nutshell is looking at the VEI and all of the new data that has come in particular from the OMI instrument to see if we can quantitatively assess some sort of connection, um, some sort of algorithm that can go between the VEI and the VSI. Volcanic degassing is a very complicated subject to work with. Um, if you look here at the pictures that I've got on the poster, we have one of a passive degassing volcano. This is Santa Maria in Guatemala. And this was a passive degassing event that occurred in January of 2018. So in this picture, you can see it's just very small plumes of gas that are coming from the volcano. This is in contrast to eruptive styles. Eruptive styles can be effusive eruptions, such as this one. This is a picture of Kilauea. Or explosive eruptions. This is a picture of Reventador. These eruptions tend to produce more SO2 emissions and as a result they'll go slightly higher in the atmosphere and start having interactions within the troposphere and if it's a very highly explosive eruption have different types of interactions and reactivity even in the stratosphere. Over the past seven years a number of advancements have been made in looking at volcanic SO2 emissions. Namely, the hyperspectral uh, UV instruments, such as again, OMI, GOM, and Skiamaki, as well as improvements in the algorithms to deduce the data that is coming from those satellites. Paramount to all of this is differentiating between these three different types of emissions that are coming from the volcano. And therein lies a lot of the issues that we have. Trying to structure a quantitative relationship between sulfur dioxide emissions and the volcanic explosivity index is something that is very difficult to do. You have to have definitions for what is passive degassing, what is an effusive eruption, and what is an explosive eruption. Thankfully, the VEI does a lot of that for us. But how to quantify that in terms of the amount of gases, gaseous emissions that are coming from the volcanoes is wherein we have issues. As a result, the major research question that this poster is posing is in measuring SO2 emissions from different volcanic sources, which methodology out of the three that were examined in this poster best quantifies those emissions so that we can relate and comparatively look at the volcanic sulfur index versus the volcanic explosivity index. Okay, going back to the poster, so the methodology for this poster was primarily a literature review. Uh, and again, it was looking at the different techniques that are out there so that we can help quantify SO2 measurements and see if we can tie those quantified measurements to the, the results VI. found were that the differ was in the air mass factor calculations. Some of them used just a constant uh, air mass factor. Others tailored it to the specific portion of the column that they were looking at. Um, 
And overall, within these studies, the first one and the third one only looked at the planetary boundary layer, whereas the one in the middle, the Karn et al. 2016, and the associated papers did take in the entire column into account when assessing the SO2 emissions. As a result, the linear fit methodology was able to derive an equation that fit in with the volcanic explosivity index. The only hitch for of the equation was that VEIs less than four tended not to fit in the equation as well as eruptions that were a four or greater. Overall, um, spatial smoothing and local bias correction that was outlined uh, by Fia Letoff, um, it was able to successfully detect those smaller scale passive emissions that were out there. However, it tends to be more suited to things that are more consistent in their emittance versus a volcano which tends to have a more sporadic uh, type of emission, em, emission history. Uh, as of June 2016, um, both all the historic and the current OMI data that's being produced by NASA utilizes the PCA algorithm that was outlined in the Karn et al. 2017 paper. Uh, to pre-process the data prior to publication by NASA. Um, their PCA approach was much more comprehensive even though it only looked at the planetary boundary layer. Given the fact that NASA has now taken this principal components analysis type review into account and this algorithm is now employed um, throughout the entire vertical column of OMI values, both historically and currently, we're going to be able to take those values, look at them in the future, and maybe apply some of the techniques that Karn et al. had looked at in their 2017 paper to different portions of the vertical column to see if we can deduce a much better fit for those VEI four and less type events and see if we can get those to coincide better with the VEI overall. So overall, while significant improvements have been and continue to be made in these retrievals, all of these methodologies have had pros and cons to them. Uh, the error that is associated with them still tends to be rather high overall, but we are making very significant steps toward being able to better quantify SO2 emissions and define a passive versus effusive versus an explosive emission in terms of the VEI as well as some sort of sulfur dioxide index. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to your comments.